When fellow strategy gaming creator Party Elite first sent me the announcement trailer for Limnus Gate, I could not have been more confused on what the game was trying to accomplish. Its claims to be a turn-based first-person shooter strategy game piqued both of our interests, considering that both of our channels focus so heavily on strategy. Our biggest question was, how can you combine such a wide gamut of gaming genres together and have it be actually cohesive? One that doesn't have your audience completely dumbfounded by its gameplay and potentially misleading several communities with so many types of games in one. It's no wonder then when Frontier invited Party Elite and I to a preview event where we were able to get hands on with the game, I simply had to do it and find out exactly what this game has in store. And at the end of our three hour session, we were craving to play more, brainstorming gameplay strategies and applauding each other on some crazy executable moves that altered the entire landscape of the previous turns. So in this video, I will do my absolute best to explain with coherency just what Limnus Gate is and how it truly is a fantastic combination of turn-based, first-person shooter strategy, beginning with the most difficult concept I've ever had to explain, the all-powerful time loop. The time loop in Limnus Hopefully. Gate is the core of your yeah, gameplay, it. consisting of five 25-second rounds in 1v1 and six 25-second rounds in 2v2. In 1v1 and 2v2 turn-based, a type of 2v2, each player takes their individual 25 second rounds, choosing one of the soon to be talked about operatives and proceeds to do whatever they want for 25 seconds. Once you're finished with that round, every action will repeat itself for every following round. Then it's the next player's turn and that 25 second loop starts over, repeating the process for five or six rounds each, again, depending on the game mode. But it gets a bit crazier. The other player or players See exactly where you went in that round, either by watching from their own drones that can access any part of the map, or from the repeated playthrough that you get to watch in between rounds to see everything unfold. That player can then interact with your first round oh, operative because they are playing the exact same 25 seconds you just did. They can nab an objective before you do, or set up a trap at said objective, or even just flat out kill you at any point. That alters the timeline. <laughs> Remember, your first round operative will always follow whatever route, abilities, directions fired, or trap set in that round, and if it dies, a ghost hologram continues the path followed, which is important to keep in mind in just a bit. Oh goodness. So by the final loop, you could be looking at upwards of 10 to 12 players, all past versions of you, your teammates, and your opponents, running around the map at the same time, coordinating, reacting, killing each other, and hopefully taking objectives. Good party. Oh, the interaction between operatives no. as the rounds ah, progress is where it gets here. truly insane, as operatives from any loop can possibly change the course for previous or future rounds. For instance, if you are defending an objective at round one, and you know that an enemy has to come around a specific corner to get to it, you can either lay an operative targeted trap or simply spray and pray. Technically, at nothing since oh, you are gosh. going so first and in the next round that opponent knowing he has okay. to go around that corner either has oh, to figure no, out how to did. kill your round one operative oh, no. or follow the five deeds of dodgeball oh, no. to try and avoid the randomized oh, so fire from your I operative oh, flip that around and it might be the final round but and you're finally able to lay that two. one trap that kills their round the three points. operative for instance dropping the objective and winning you the game okay. one that you've technically been losing until that very last loop. Limnus Gate is amazing simply because of this type of strategic interaction. In my time playing the preview build, I had a fifth round operative wipe out all but one of Party Elite's operatives, allowing me to come back from a three to one objective yeah. deficit to tying the round out in objectives and then winning because of the extra points received from kills. Party, after fully understanding the consequences of how the rounds build up, noticed in a 2v2 match that three rounds worth of my team's operatives all converged at this one small spot on the map. And with one very well-timed rocket, took out all operatives, preventing me and my teammate from destroying the objectives with a single shot. The all-powerful time loop is indeed a game changer for Limnus Gate, and for the rest of this video, just about everything I'm going to talk about will have that time loop in mind, 
So yeah, hopefully no. I've done a good enough job explaining it to you. <laughs> it's not a simple concept to talk about, although it does play much easier. So don't feel bad if you're lost, especially once I break down the two ways to play. Well, actually three. Okay, there's actually four. Limnus Gate had two game modes during the event, Retrieve XM and Seek and Destroy, although there are actually four game modes altogether. Also, Both uh, game modes we played were won by having the most points at the end of two halves, and completing the objectives nets you the most so points really with kills game. and damage dealt, giving you a smaller amount. Well this means that nabbing objectives alone will not guarantee you victory. Party was able to eke out a win by one point oh, no. by just having dealt two more damage than I had in that round, <laughs> as we had the same number of kills and had grabbed the same amount of XM oh, objectives, shit, he had just done slightly more damage. Onto the game modes themselves, Retrieve XM is, at least when we played, a 1v1 five round game focused on the retrieval of four balls of XM, which is what's needed to power the Limnus Gate. You'll need to get to the objective and back without dying to actually get the points for XM. Picking it up alone is not going to be enough. The most I was able to grab in one 25 second loop was two XM objectives, and that was accomplished even by the slowest operative. In Retrieve XM, it's essentially a free-for-all, unlike Seek and Destroy. Seek and Destroy is a bit more complex as it has two different ways to play it. Seek and Destroy is currently a 2v2 six round game, where one team is trying to destroy two objectives while the other team defends them. In the first variation we played 2v2 turn-based, each player took their turn individually, so it was Offensive Player 1, then Defense Player 1, then Offensive Player 2, then Defensive Player 2. With six rounds in this one, each player essentially got to play with three operatives across technically three rounds. This flip-flop style turn-based system is much slower paced and allows you and your teammate to, in my opinion, more easily react and or plan around specific actions of your opponents. There's still a good deal of coordination involved, but it's not nearly as chaotic as the other Seek and Destroy mode teammates play together. This version plays almost exactly like turn-based, but instead of each player essentially playing their own individual round, you have one team playing a single round together at the same time, then flipping to the other team playing a round doing the same thing. Since both players play together, it takes up two round slots, quote unquote, meaning you still technically only have three operatives you play with across three rounds. Teammates playing together is both much more satisfying and enjoyable to play than the turn-based. Playing with your teammates feels much more natural, and the coordination in real time, rather than just watching, paves the way for better reactions and planning in the end. <gasps> oh, please take both of them. Oh, I took all You of them. did? That's amazing. That's amazing. And so did I! Yes! <laughs> yes! predicting the future, baby. Plus, it well, gets very chaotic by the last rounds on either uh, side, no, where side, 8 to 12 should, of the past uh, operatives are all uh, running amok to try to beat each other out and still keep to the objective of the game as a whole. The chaos is very fun to both play in the midst of and watch take place from the sky in your drone. Some of my favorite moments were just watching the chaos unfold to see everyone trying to build on the last round and accomplish their tasks in the most efficient way, leading me into... The real strategy, operative selection. If I haven't completely lost you already, let me add another layer to this onion of a game. Limnus Gate features seven operatives, each with their own unique weapon and special ability. A couple are pretty basic, like Capitan, who has a assault rifle and a frag grenade, or Rush, who's dual wielding handguns and can boost her running speed for a short period of time. Others seem a bit more unique, like Toxin, who has a toxic poison cannon and is pretty dang slow moving but her Displacer ability teleports her to wherever her projectile lands. Striker is by far my favorite and best operative. She has a powerful sniper with only a two round magazine, but can slow down time for a few seconds to nail those hard to hit shots. I wasn't disappointed with any of the operatives I played with. They all seemed to fit very well into the game. The only disappointment came in when I chose to utilize them. Once you use an operative in a round, you cannot use them throughout the entire rest of the half. This means knowing when and how to use an operative and their abilities is strategically crucial to your success in the game. As we continued playing during the event, I noticed a pattern to my playthrough and tended to go with Toxin or Rush early as they can access the map the fastest and get me to where I'm going, grabbing objectives quicker. 
Death Blows, Proximity Mine, and Rocket Launcher are perfect for grouped enemies, as is Capitan's Frag Grenade. Vendetta's multiple turrets can pick off enemies across the map if you place them early enough and in choke points or with bright lines of sight. Carl's shields, which can attach to operatives by the way, might be more of a late game choice to protect an important move in your loop, while Striker's ability to slow down time provides crucial seconds to pick off multiple enemies in the last rounds, just like I talked about earlier. It's all about timing. Well, that and thinking outside the box. What I'm most excited about with the upcoming open beta is seeing people's strategies as I play against them or watch on Twitch. I just mentioned that I saw myself trending towards a pattern of operative selection, but that doesn't mean my strategy will work every time. Half of the game is reacting to what your opponent does, and their operative selection could make you switch things up at the last second. You might notice that, for instance, there's one hallway where multiple enemies come through, say in round four. And while you initially may have wanted to shield a previous round operative to keep them from killing her and losing your XM, a couple of well-placed turrets wipes those enemies out before they kill her, or maybe your operative still gets killed, causing you to lose the XM, but those extra kills you got in that hallway for a few rounds ends up gaining you the win. This is especially true when it comes to 2v2 gameplay. In playing with Party Elite in 2v2, there were rounds where we chose based on our strengths. Party's great at uh, getting around fast, if you know what I mean. And placing turrets at strategic choke points was my forte. In choosing these, not only was Party able to defend against objectives, but my turrets then defended him from the enemy operatives. One strategy I'm very excited to nail down is combining Striker, the time-bending sniper, with various operatives in 2v2. We found out that when Striker uses her ability, it slows down time for both players on the team. So it's very plausible to time the slowdown to where your teammates who's using, say, Death Blow can use that time bend to accurately shoot a rocket at a group of enemy operatives, or to even use two snipers in tandem to yeah, have more opportunities time, to take like, out opponents like, hey, flip-flopping between their second, special time building time. special ability. It's everything combined in this video that brings me to my thoughts on the game. Limnus Gate seemed like a very overwhelming and confusing mess of a game when I first hopped in. The thought of having to react to players both in the future and in the past with the time loop feature is something I just could not wrap my mind around when watching the trailer and the feature breakdown video pre-event. The first game was indeed painful to watch, but as Party and I chatted during the entirety of the event, there were several aha moments, and plenty of oh no moments too, where we both suddenly understood potential strategies and consequences of what we had done, who we chose, and how it all played together as the rounds progressed. The mechanics of the game are fairly simple when you get that comprehensive look into it, and in no way is that a bad thing. But simple in design does not mean simple in execution. There are quite literally millions of possible combinations to work through in Limnusgate, and we only played on two maps and two or three game modes. I can tell you right now, not every strategy will work the same on every map. The two we played were completely different and made for some great scenes and amazing playthroughs. Limnusgate is a truly unique game so far. It plays very well overall, it looks fantastic, and I really do think that this will bring in players from a range of genres, both professional, down to rookie, strategy, to first person shooter, and all enjoy it in their own ways. I personally am looking forward to getting my hands on it again and creating content for it, which says a lot coming from a guy who's more focused on RTS and turn-based non-FPS strategy games. Thank you so much for checking out my video on Limnusgate. Hope you didn't get lost in my explanation of how it's played. I myself had a very hard time figuring out how to properly put it all together, so I won't be offended if you're left confused. Be sure to leave your comments in the comment section with any questions, feedback, or thoughts on what you just watched. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and turn on bell notifications. Lemnus Gate releases August 3rd with the PC open beta due to arrive sometime in July. I highly recommend signing up for the beta as it will give you the only chance at checking out the game yourself before final release, so you can best determine whether or not you want to pre-order or grab the game at launch. That'll be all from me, stay tuned for some potentially goofy 1v1 and 2v2 videos from me with Party Elite, and be sure to check out his channel for coverage on the game as well. This is Havoc, and I will see you in the next one. Activate the Lemniscape.